The Feast of the Visitation, we are very familiar with this. We, uh, we pray it uh, in, as one of the mysteries of the Rosary. And notice how it mentions that Mary went with haste. And it was as soon as she heard from the angel Gabriel that her cousin Elizabeth was already six months pregnant in her old age, in other words, a miraculous conception, Mary knew that Elizabeth would be in need of assistance, would be in need of help. So she goes as quickly as she can. And that reminds us of Mary. She's got this great love, this great compassion for everyone and wants to be at the service of others. But what is really noteworthy about this event is that as soon as Elizabeth hears the voice of Mary, even before she sees her, even before she greets her, just at the sound of Mary's voice, she is filled with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist in her womb also is filled with the Holy Spirit and leaps with joy. Now, this is very noteworthy. You know, we just had the Feast of Pentecost a couple of Sundays ago, and, you know, it's noteworthy that Mary was also in the upper room with the apostles when the Holy Spirit came down upon them. So it's kind of like wherever Mary is, the Holy Spirit comes or the Holy Spirit manifests himself. But it's kind of like with Elizabeth and John the Baptist, it's kind of like a mini Pentecost before the actual Pentecost, you know, 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord. And, and keep in mind, you know, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes down upon the apostles, they're no longer confused. They understand everything. They have knowledge. They have courage. So in the case of Elizabeth, she's filled with certain knowledge. What is this knowledge? She recognizes that Mary is with child, and not just with child, but with the child who is the Son of God, the Messiah, God incarnate. You know, uh, she calls her, you know, why is this that the mother of my Lord comes to me? So Elizabeth is granted this knowledge of this awareness, and, and that's why she proclaims what she does. But she's also made aware of the child in her womb leaping for joy. In other words, she might have thought, oh, well, well, why is my child, you know, kicking in the womb? But no, she understood why John the Baptist at the very same moment was also leaping for joy. Because John the Baptist in the womb understood that he is in the presence of God. In other words, Mary is carrying God in her womb. And this is why he's leaping for joy, because we are all created for God. And John the Baptist, even though he's only six months in development in utero, in the womb, he understands. And, you know, this is a very pro-life message. So John is six months old, and Mary is only a few days pregnant with the Christ child. But both of those children in the womb are very active. And so, so it's a very good pro-life message. But, but, but the thing is that just at the voice of Mary. And you see, the voice of Mary, I mean, what did it sound like? Imagine what the voice of Mary sounds like. And it's not just the sound of it, but the fact that through her voice, through her speaking, a connection was made to Mary. And so the whole point is that whenever we make a connection to Mary, we receive the gifts of God. Mary helps us to be closer to God. Mary is the channel through which Christ came into this world. Now, when we think of, of a mother and child relationship, it's one of the greatest bonds. You know, a mother carries her child in her womb for roughly nine months. And, and there's, a, there's a bond that takes place between mother and child. And, you know, they, they share the same blood. And, and even once the child is born, the, the closeness between the, ch the, the mother and the child is much greater than the, the bond between the father and the child. And in fact, you know, I, I was amazed by uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe, as you know, when he died, you know, he was uh, given this uh, in injection of cyanide poisoning. And when he died, his mother, who was hundreds of miles away, she fainted because she knew her son had died. 
In other words, this very close bond, this very close spiritual connection existed between St. Maximilian Kolbe and his mother. Imagine the bond that existed between Christ and his blessed mother. And so because there's this intimate connection, you know, Christ, he... You know, like the child does something to the mother. The child affects the mother in a certain way. And, and Christ, because he's God, right, his, his godliness kind of overflows into Mary. And from Mary, it overflows into us. So even though there is this tremendous bond between mother and child, between every mother and child, and if there is greater love between mother and child, I think that bond will be greater. But you see, there's an even greater intimate connection than just that physical caring of a child in in a mother's womb and that greater connection is God dwelling in the soul and you see God dwelt in the soul of Mary and this is a greater connection because God actually enters into our souls so Mary was conceived immaculate because God knew, I mean, God was preparing Mary to be the mother of the Messiah. God knew that Mary would be the mother of the Messiah. So he prepared her in this special way. So she was full of grace. This is the why the angel Gabriel greets her, hail full of grace, right? The Lord is with thee. So she's full of God. And so it's not just because she's carrying Christ in her womb, but also because she's full of God in her soul. For both of these reasons, just the sound of her voice is able to transmit God or the Holy Spirit to Elizabeth and to John the Baptist in her womb, and in fact, to all of us. Now, recall when Christ... You know, there, there's a, I think somebody comes up to Christ and says, you know, blessed is the womb that bore thee and the breast that gave thee suck. And our Lord's response, no, rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. And he's not saying that, you know, Mary's role is, is insignificant. He's not saying that. He's saying that the union of an individual with God, in other words, God dwelling in the soul, is far greater than just physically even for Mary to carry Christ in her womb as great as that is God dwelling in the soul is greater and so Mary because she was conceived immaculate because she's sinless God dwelt within her soul perfectly so she has perfect love for Christ she has perfect love for all of us and if she's willing to go with haste to visit her cousin Elizabeth in the hill country of Judea how much more will she be, make haste to come to the aid of her children, her spiritual children, all of us? When we invoke her, when we somehow make a connection with her, we may not hear his, her voice, but we can pray to her. We can ask her to intercede on our behalf. And in fact, the word pray, you know, sometimes non-Catholic Christians, they, they think that by praying, we're worshiping Mary. We don't worship Mary. We just think that she's the one who's the most influential with Christ. And of course, we believe in the intercession of the saints. So we, when we pray, we're asking her. In fact, the word prayer traditionally meant to ask or to beseech. So we're asking Mary to intercede on our behalf. So having a great devotion to Our Lady means we're connecting with her. And because we're connecting with her, the graces of Christ continue to flow through her as it did at the visitation and throughout her entire life and while she is in heaven. So this is what's happening when we have a great devotion to our Mary. So uh, it's important for us to do that and to, yes, let Our Lady know what our needs are. Let us ask her to intercede on our behalf. Just a couple of, of announcements. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, petitions box is still out there, but I believe this is the last day. So if you have any petitions that you wanted to include in that box, which will be taken to the Eucharistic Congress in the U.S., and it will accompany the Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of the Cape. So make sure you get your petitions in there. And also just a reminder, this weekend we celebrate the Solemnity of Corpus Christi, also known as the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, his presence in the Eucharist. And to honor our Eucharistic Lord,
we will have a Eucharist, an outdoor Eucharistic procession around the church and the school, and there will be a reception afterwards in the parish hall. And so hopefully you can join us for that, not just to honor our Lord, but to give witness to our faith to all those who may uh, see us, uh, including those who uh, participate. It's a great way to increase our devotion to our Eucharistic Lord.